Um, no, because I, David informed us all how big it is overseas and how for some reason it just hasn't touched down in America. But it's really the Mickey Mouse to everybody else, um, especially in Japan. So I think it, it was just exciting um, to be able to sort of adapt it here and hopefully um, please all the fans, the original fans as well. Not a ton. We have nothing on our on our plate compared to these animators. Um, I've gone in uh, a couple times and done a couple full days of recording, but really it's, um, you do it over the course of six months or so and you see originally the pencil sketchings of what your character would look like and then these big placards of, um, of what they think your hairstyle will be and what your face will look like when it's mad or sad or happy or laughing or angry and uh, and then starting to see the animation actually work, and then the colors go in, and then the depth goes in, and it's there's so many layers, and they work on these movies for so long. It's if you don't know how it's done, and I don't really even know how it's done, I don't think you realize how much hard work these people have all put into it. Oh wow, what if that could happen one day? And then so that you know maybe makes people be a little bit more green or eco-friendly and then the idea of uh, in the movie starts out with this sort of um, the introduction is is about robots and how they they work for us and we're happy with them but but don't get too close to them because they work for us and the idea of sort of second-class citizens and and not being as nice as you always should and and that things are disposable and then Astro comes into the picture and he has every human emotion but he's a robot and the everything turns chaotic because people think what well, well what do we do with that and I think the movie's just about using your heart and your gut and and treat people how they deserve to be treated it wouldn't be hard to read into some even bigger political uh, undertones in the movie with uh, uh, a nemesis named the peacekeeper mm -hmm. um, so do you think that people are going to play off that it's obviously a family movie isn't it? oh it's definitely a family movie but there like I said there's so much thought that goes into all of these the colors and themes and everything and I think you know the irony that it's called the peacekeeper and it's the the, the most terrorizing robot ever um, I think it's just you know something to take with a grain of salt but it also gets you thinking Did you, uh, when was the first time you saw your voice paired up with your character uh, do you remember the time um, it was when I uh, I saw a very short clip about six months ago, and I wasn't really convinced that I had done a good job. Um, and then I saw the movie a couple nights ago, and what I really wanted was to be able to not hear my voice. I don't even like to listen to my answering machine message. So it flabbergasts me that people hire me for voiceover gigs because I don't care for it. I, I hear it ringing in my head all day because I talk a mile a minute and I'm just over it. My own, The sound of my own voice. But I, I tried with Cora to just make it as real as possible and as heartfelt as possible and I was kind of able to ignore the fact that it was me in the movie which I think is the best thing that could have happened. 